Okay, so in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to code using C++. For this, we are going to use Dev C++ version 6.3. You could download it from their official website. So basically, the first time you will launch it, it's going to show you a couple of different options, like how you can select something and the interface and the type of fonts you need and everything. And each time you actually launch it, what type of code it should show you like some lines by default. So I'm going to show you how you can get started just to practice your C++ code. You're going to go in the upper left hand corner and you're going to choose file. You're going to go here. Now, as you can see here, you have two types of options in here. You have the source file. It's basically used for to make just a plain C++ code to be used in a larger project. We are not going to use this, but just going to project right here. So as you can see, we have some different type of options. It is actually, if you need to make something from scratch, it's not as advanced as Visual Studio, but it's still usable just to practice your code. Now we have these basic applications here, like you can create an empty project, a DLL file, a static library, or a console application. We also have these for graphics, like you can use Direct3D or OpenGL, Windows 32 for like an animation, a window or something like that you can actually code the animations for like we minimize or maximize something in consoles like all of these but we're just going to stick here we're going to go to console application make sure c++ project is chosen and by default just double click here or just click it name your project anything you want by default you can just name it anything like i'm just gonna give it a name i'm just gonna name it c1 and now I'm just going to hit OK. And then it's going to choose to show you where you could actually save it. By default, it's going to save it in the documents. And in its older versions, if you saved it into the C drive, it didn't work. So you can choose some somewhere else to save it. Or you can just leave it right here the way it is in the documents or just make a new folder inside C drive or somewhere else. Just don't save in the C drive itself because it needs administrator rights so it's not actually going to work with that so each time you will try to compile it it will just give you the make win, win file error anyways i'm just going to hit save and there we have launched it so as you can see we have this bunch of code written here we are just going to erase this all completely or you can just hit Control a to select everything and hit the backspace now the first line you saw was this one this is called a preprocessor directive or a header file. Basically, this uh, this file is related to your compiler. Whatever you type or need the main functions to make it work, you are going to need a header file. Now, these are the most common ones, like these. We have so many. Now, you would be noticing a difference. Like I typed in here, iostream and string.h. They are both separate. This is uh, the IO stands for input output streams because it's just for taking basic instructions. The second one is the string one. It's used to take a string. I will cover it up what it is. But for now, just stick to this one. And there's another one which we most commonly use, which is this one, conio.h. Basically, the con stands for console and IO is input output. These are called preprocessor directives or simply header files because the small h it stands for the header file and as you can see uh, the new standard c++ it does not use the h it only has the io stream or kanye or something some of them still have it now basically any type of code that you want to execute you will need a main function like this and it's ended by a curly brackets because you need functions which have some type of instruction you write the code within these brackets so there is no limitation you can give as many spaces as you want or type it in any way you can join the brackets like this too it will still work now just to make your code easy and readable you can just do it like this and the line numbers are also being shown so the first thing we're going to cover up is how you can print something out and variables so first we're going to cover up how you can print something out there are two types of commands which we usually need for now. I'm just going to take the Kanye file out. We really don't need it. So for this, we have two types of commands. The first thing you remember, we chose a console application. So I'm going to type in C out, which means console out. And on the other line, I'm going to type in C in, 
Now, remember, if you want to give an output on the cons uh, on the console, we're just gonna give it these marks, which is the uh, these this one's the extraction operator, these two less than marks, and this one is the insertion operator. So you would need to type it anything, like you can type anything between these brackets, these double quoted brackets. Just like a quotation, you can just see out anything you want. And inside of here, sorry, we're not going to do that on scene anyways. We're going to cover up scene in a bit. So in the see out, you can type it anything. Like I'm just going to type in C1 program file is about to run and display on the console like this and to end your statement you're gonna put a semicolon like this now to build your program and run it and display it we are going to press this rebuild all or we can just hit the build and compile and run so rebuild all means it will actually build your entire source code like this and now it's also going to give you this little main file which you could save anywhere like you see my code was saved in the documents but it's now showing up the E drive here. So they could be separate. Just make sure you can also put them in a single folder, but you will need to re-pick it up. As you can see, it's a C++ source file. You can choose the encoding too, but we're, you can keep it in any. You could choose the big N in Unicode or any, but we're just going to stick to the ENS file. And yeah, I already had this previous one, so I'm just going to override it since I really don't need it. Now, it's going to actually show you the progress right here to build. Now, we got an error. Why is that? Basically, we need the standard operator like this. And this is the scope resolution operator. So each time we need to actually use the IO stream, we would actually need this. Now, if I rebuild it, you guys will actually see it rebuilds. Uh, the source co code got rebuilt. I'm going to run it. As you can see, it's displaying our output right here, this one, the C1 program file, whatever I type. Similarly, if I really just type in a lot of garbage in here, like you guys can see, I'm just typing this whole thing in, and I'm just going to do compile and run. It just compiled and it's running. You see this random alphabets and numbers I typed here, they're just going to display here. So this is how we do it. Now another thing we can we need to give it some input right so instead of using the stdc out all the time we have namespaces so we're just going to put this here using namespace std and a semicolon to end the statement like this now as you guys can see if i just type in here c out and i'm just going to leave anything like before i'm just going to type a one two three i typed like that and make sure you put the semicolon at the end. I'm going to compile it again. Now I'm just going to run one, two, three. I typed it's just going to show you in terms of literals like that. So anyways, we have covered that, but that up. now we're going to cover variables. What is a variable to be exact? Now, as you guys are aware of, well, we need to give input to something. So for, for that reason, we need variable. We have some data types int is for numbers char is for character and we also have booleans or just keep that out for now and float okay for now you just keep int char and float these are the three you need and a string and to use a string you will need to put the header file up there the hash includes string one so if we want to actually give out a output we're just going to display a message like this see out give input like this so we're going to give it an input like that and now we need c in and what to give input to something we need something to give input to which will store that input so we're going to come up here just type in int and name the variable anything okay anything at all like i'm just going to give it a name a, a or a small a anything or just i'm just going to name it like input itself to int INP or just input itself like this and I'm gonna put a semicolon at the end of the statement and now when I do this input thing just make sure it's not a reserver like C out C in you cannot use those as a variable even int as a variable or namespace or just using like these all or even STD and all 
you really can't use these all as a variable that will give you an error like you do int c in that's going to confuse the compiler because it's a reserved word you don't need to do that anyways now i'm going to type in input and semicolon and i'm just going to do c out like this and we're just going to display input so if i show you the compilation oh c in input oh sorry i typed it twice i didn't saw it okay it's now compiling compilation done i'm gonna run it you see it's asking me give input i know it's not looking that good now it's an integer type i type anything else is going to give me lots of garbage values like i type in a you see it's giving me zero why is that because our data type here is of an integer so it's integers are numbers so if i run it again i'm just going to type in five i know it's not looking that good so I'm just going to type in enter. It's just going to display at five, meaning the code works. You can make it look attractive and all. Like we can just come here, give it like this, semicolon in a space, compile and run it again. Like this. Now you see, give input. It's looking all nice and all. So now you guys know how you could just give the inputs and, well, take the output too. That much you're aware of it. Now in C++ there is another thing called functions and I know most of the people don't really, they make it really complex onto a further later stage but you can actually make the functions easier. So for functions it's really simple basically. Now we are typing something in here but why like I tell you just take an input in multiple at multiple occasions okay you will just copy paste the lines or do it or you can just simply do this for example I'm just gonna go up right here I'm gonna come here and we're going to the main function okay any code we will type here it will be executed here now just like this there is another simple function I'm just gonna come here this is void this is the data type meaning void means nothing it could be anything like void it could be an integer or anything like it will just return something it has to return something and you're not sure you can use void because it's just uh, before the int main used to be void main too but now they use it as an int main because it has to return zero you usually type return zero i will cover it up in detail where it's actually useful so i'm just going to leave the return zero now because it's an integer and as you saw when i typed that a in the video it was returning something which was zero because when I typed A, it did not return A because it was an integer. So an integer returned zero because of that variable. So anyways, I'm just gonna go here and void name or function something. I'm gonna name it print like this and brackets just like that. Now this function can be called because this main function is called by the compiler. So we can't really rewrite it anywhere again, but I have written this print function and inside print, we're just gonna give it C out like this and we're going to just see out something like well this is the print function inside the main and yeah like this fn is short for function semicolon and if i just come here i can type in print like this and a semicolon now if i compile it and run it you guys can see this is the print function inside the main basically what it did was it just called that entire code from here similarly we could have taken a value to like for example i'm just going to come here we're going to take an int make sure the int is like not like this the i is big or anything it won't work make sure they're all small int and i'm going to name this x and after that, we could, if we hard code define it here, like equal four, it's going to be hard coded. We cannot, if we actually use it as an input, we could give any input, like it's four. For example, now I'm going to come here and modify the code a little. I'm going to do another C out like this and type in give input like that and put a semicolon. So basically, if I do another C in, I'm just going to take an input of X. And if I come here, now as you guys can see, I'm going to do another C out like that. And I'm going to do how to take, sorry, no, my bad. The input is 
Now I need to give the input right here. So I'm just going to put this in like this. Basically, it means that I can just do more outputs in a single line. I will explain it to you in a bit. So I'm just going to compile the code. So it's asking us to give the input. So it's an integer. The, da the data type already has it. As you can see here, x is equal to 4. We are actually going to override it. Basically, anything I will type here, 8, is just going to be replaced by it. You see, the input value is 8. Now, as you guys already know, if you see it again, if I run it, I don't need to recompile it because it's already inside the memory. So I'm typing in 12. Now you see, yeah, we need to give some spacing. Now you know as I gave spacing manually earlier, instead of giving the spacing manually, I can just do this. For example, I can just come here. This is the give input, right? I can just give it the end L. For example, if I needed to merge multiple inputs, I can just do this give input and then I can type in right here like this and if I just do this like this I can basically type an end L like I can do it like this C out and I'm just gonna do end L like this so basically the end L is going to end your line right where it was I'm gonna compile it and run it again you see it's showing us give input right here then we have an end L meaning it's going to end this line right here and it's going to shift it to the next line because it's showing us this is the end of this line if I typed it earlier it's just, it was just going to give an empty line like that and I can just type the input here like 15 similarly we can put a lot of end L's or we can just do this if I take that out and if I do this give input like this space and this and leave a little space I'm going to put an and L like this so we don't need to type in C out all the time. And now we will take the input. Basically, when I do that, it's going to actually take it on the next line now. So I compile the code. You will need to compile the code all the time if you need the new updated code. And if you just run it directly without compiling it, it's going to keep that previous code in the memory. So as you see, I type 12. Yeah, it's working now. So what mistake did we do here? We needed to put the end L after taking the input. So we could have done that simply by another thing. So if I go here and remove this, the code is going to take input from us. What we can alternatively use is backslash and it's it also it means next line. So I gave it I gave this little space here. Okay, look here. And here I'm not giving the space as I type backslash n. So if I rebuild my code again. I'm going to run it. You see it's asking for input. I'm going to type in 12 like that. You see? Now if you actually look here, we didn't quite arrange this. So don't worry about that. We could have given it a little space like that. We gave it our input, okay? Now you see I gave a space in the start and the next one is just showing me exactly like this. And that one has a space in the start. That's because we gave a manual space. So this space does not count. Don't think it's going to ruin it. So you're going to give a space in the start. You could, but if you just leave it like this, it's going to be okay. And if I place another backslash T, these are like little modifiers which you can apply. And I gave another space I know, but if I leave the space out and just compile it, it's going to give a tab space just like in MS Word. I compiled it again, as you can see, so it's going to ask us input. I'm going to type in 5. Now you see, now as you can see here, if we compare it to our code, so we actually took some input and then we did that so we have backslash n meaning it's going to shift it to the next line which which was supposed to be here right here and you guys get the idea now now why you guys must be wondering if we just need to print these three things why we just can't just write it into simply the main function like here so now if I erase the code I would need to retype it all right so we have something called comments like this is on a single line you just put these two, okay? I'm gonna do these forward slashes, not these backward ones like this. The backward ones don't work. So if I just put backward slashes, it's gonna give you an error. We need forward slashes. These are this is a comment, meaning this line of code won't be executed. Similarly, if I just go here, and no, I would I know I would need to manually type this on each line. Yeah, but alternatively, you can just put this. It's going to comment everything ahead of it. And since we just need to comment it up till here, this is the closing one. 
a asterisk and a forward slash like this. A forward slash and an asterisk is the starting point. This is the ending point like this. Now, basically, when I just compile it, there's nothing to compile it, won't. So you guys were wondering if you could just put it like this, like just three C outs, like we did before. Why not we just can't do that? So this is a really bad approach because later on when you people actually try to practice and discover, uh, well, you know, functions. So it could become a bit confusing because when I was studying it myself, my teacher, well, he did not taught us well, very well. He used bad approaches and his method of teaching was just not suitable for me. So you guys need to just function it. If you really don't need to practice this all like this, you can do it in the main and then implement it or just use the C out statements into a function and call it. And you can call a function within another function too. So I'm just going to show you this like one, two, three. You guys what might be wondering. So this is not really a good approach. Try to work with functions from the start. In the next video, I will actually show you how to use the if else statements and other statements too. Well, I know this video sucks a bit and I rushed it a bit and it's a bit longer. So, well, if you guys have any questions or so, you can ask me in the comments. And since I just started my channel, you guys, if you need to pick a next tutorial, you could just tell me which one you want to pick. And well, if you have any questions, you can ask to me in the comments.